Hey everyone, thanks for uh, joining me today. I'd like to uh, go through the logarithm uh, phishing intelligence engine. Basically show you guys kind of how to configure this, how to install everything. Um, so first and foremost, what I'd like to do here is look at the uh, logarithm labs GitHub page. So right here we have the uh, Pi project up. Um, now, first thing you wanna do, just go ahead and pull this whole project down. Now, once you have this file saved, uh, we're actually going to go through each of the steps of the installation here and uh, essentially get Pi up and running in your environment. So scroll down here. Now you can see uh, right up front we have kind of just high level overview of what Pi is, um, some of the features of the phishing intelligence engine, some additional resources that can help you kind of understand more about the project and um, you know, learn more about kind of what we're trying to do with this and how to configure this uh, within your environment. Now the real meat of this here is down in this installation and usage section. Um, basically, uh, there's multiple different aspects of this framework that you can configure for your environment. Um, and they all work together to uh, essentially help automate the whole process of detection and response to phishing attacks. Now right here, what we're looking at is the kind of center of everything, this uh, Pi server, if you will. And that's essentially what we're gonna be building out today is this central Windows box uh, that's going to control a lot of the automation here. So let's go ahead and go right into the Pi message trace logging uh, folder here. Now, first thing we need to do uh, is determine, you know, if you want to actually use the full uh, 0365 trace script here. Uh, this is going to do the full automated response, triage, analysis, um, and also takes advantage of these uh, plugins folders here, which has a, a bunch of scripts that integrate with Office 365 and perform various actions. Now, since this is the core of the phishing intelligence engine, um, there's a lot of additional workflows going on here. So if you just want Office 365 message tracking, uh, you can go ahead and click this link here, and this will bring you to another page which is much more of a, a basic uh, message tracking feature. So this is going to be just uh, essentially if you only want to pull these logs in, you don't want to do any phishing detection, uh, response, those types of things. So we're going to go ahead and set up our uh, actual Pi engine here. So we're going to do the full phishing, phishing engine. And so down here we have just some basic uh, system specifications if you want to deploy this in your environment. Now uh, really these are minimum requirements. We would recommend uh, maybe beef this up a little bit. Ideally partition out the drive so you have your data separate from the disk in case you, you know anything happens there. Um, well, basically, we just recommend use a, a Windows server of some kind uh, that um, has the GUI available and is able to install Outlook. This is kind of going to be where you're going to keep all these messages. Um, so down here in the uh, install section, we're going to just go through these steps kind of one by one in this video and walk through the whole configuration process of uh, this project. So first, what we're going to do is log into our office uh, instance here. So the the first thing you need to do before actually configuring any, any of these scripts is make sure you have uh, accounts configured properly. Um, so what you're going to need to do, now we actually already have it set up here, you see we have our report phishing account. Um, what you want to do is make sure you have an account that can receive these messages somewhere where your users can report these. Um, now you can do a separate service account for the automated actions say, you know, when we're going into inboxes, quarantining, pulling mail, those types of things, uh, you could definitely set up a service account for that. And that's actually something I would recommend. So you have something that's a lot harder to guess that most people don't know about, um, as opposed to using this kind of all encompassing uh, inbox for uh, both handling those messages and uh, responding. So essentially for this demo, we're just gonna go ahead and use uh, this account for everything. So we have it set as a global admin um, so that's what you need to set your service account for. For the uh, just general phishing inbox, you don't need any special permissions, just a basic user. Um, but for the account you're going to go and perform smart response actions and things like that from, you want to make sure it has full admin access. And now we're going to go back uh, to the main uh, Office 365 window here. 
and we're on our Windows server, so we already have that built and ready to go. So what we're going to go ahead and do is install Office uh, 2016 on this box. So we're going to get Outlook up and running, get everything configured and uh, essentially ready to go so that we can start configuring the next aspects of this. Now that we have uh, Outlook installed, we're going to go ahead uh, down here and configure our inbox. So let's just click next here. Now we do want uh, our Outlook to connect to an email account. So we'll go ahead and hit yes. Now we have a different account plugged in here. So we'll go ahead and do manual setup. So let's we'll do Office 365 here. Plug in our account information. There we go. So we have our phishing inbox plugged in. Now we're going to go ahead and connect out to the inbox to O365 and get this uh, configured here. So it's prompting us for credentials. Make sure we're using the uh, proper account here. All right, so we will plug in our phishing inbox and then we just need the password. Now we're using this in production, make sure you use a very strong password and uh, rotate this often because permissions that this, this account may have. Now we don't need to set up on a mobile phone at this time. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. And now this is going to bring up our inbox. Now you notice my inbox is already uh, prepared here. This is something because we'd already been using this for demos and stuff like that. So what you're gonna wanna do once you uh, have your inbox uh, all set up, we'll actually go ahead and clear these out. We have a bunch of demo messages sitting in here. Um, but essentially what you're gonna wanna do is set your, your mailbox up in a way that you can uh, process phishing attacks and also handle, um, handle everything that users are reporting to you. So now that we've uh, cleared out all of our old mail here, we're going to go ahead and over to uh, our inbox. Now you're going to want to create these two folders under the inbox here. Now completed is where all the messages that uh, users have reported to you are going to be stored. So essentially um, this is going to come in with an attached email so that uh, we can actually get the headers and pull all of the uh, pertinent content out of that uh, out of that email once it's submitted. So that's a real key component of this, is making sure you get these mails over to you in a way that uh, they come in as an attachment so that the Pi server can process them. Now spam is the actual attack email. So, so completed is where the user reported stuff goes, spam is where the actual attacks go. So once these mails have been processed, we actually pull the full contents out, store them over here. Now you can see we have a bunch of our, uh, our phishing attacks already processed. And now processing is the other folder that you're gonna to need to create. Now this is under the root of your phishing account. Now the processing folder is where mail is gonna go after it's actually been quarantined or pulled from the, from the inbox uh, using O365 Ninja, which is a tool we'll be talking about uh, in a little bit. Um, but essentially you need to have this folder so that you have a place to put these messages in a way that you can review and analyze them and determine risk and also uh, just as a holding place for you know once you've gone through and quarantined this mail from a bunch of inboxes um, the thing with Office 365 is you need a place to put that data. So now that we have our inbox all configured let's go ahead and set up a rule uh, just for automated response to phishing attacks. Now we're not going to set up anything fancy here. You can get as creative as you would like, uh, but in general you want to have some feedback that goes back out to the users who are reporting these messages to you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a rule. Now we don't have to have any restrictions on this. We want this to be from anyone uh, within the company. So for us we're going to leave this open, uh, but for you guys you may want to trim this down, uh, set it up so it's only acting on internal mail and things like that. So we'll go ahead and click through the menu options here. Um, basically what we're going to do is have the server reply with a specific message. Now we're doing server reply so that we don't have to rely on our Outlook window being open uh, for users to get that, that feedback. So we're just going to put together a quick message here. Thank you for forwarding this uh, phishing email. 
you know nothing uh nothing too fancy um and then uh once once we're done here we're gonna go ahead and save this and uh set this up to run um as any new mail comes in so we'll hit save close this and then we'll just click through here now we don't have to do any other rules at this point. Um, you could tune this a bit if you want. You can also change the responses based on the email or who sent it, what have you. Um, you can get as creative as you want with this. So we're just gonna name our rule here real quick. Now we aren't gonna run this right now because um, we don't wanna send out a bunch of emails for no reason. So go ahead and hit finish and we're good to go. Now we have our uh, email rule uh, configured within our Outlook client or within our account. So the next step what we need to do is uh, copy all of the source code that we just pulled down uh, from the Pi project over to our uh, Windows server. So we're going to go ahead and pull this, pull this down and uh, before we do that, you want to make sure you have your drive partitioned out. So here you can see we, we created a new volume uh, called the eDrive. And now this is where we're going to install a project to. Now you don't have to do this. It's just something uh, we like doing for a good practice. So go ahead and pull that up. We have our, uh, our source code that we just pulled down. So we're going to go ahead and extract this, the uh, contents of this here. Let's pull it into downloads. So now we have our uh, new folder here. Now let's go ahead and we're going to pull pi message trace logging this whole folder, basically all the contents of this uh, over into our new drive. So, so essentially you're going to want to take this whole folder and place this uh, where you would like to install the project. So we just put this over an E and we're, we're going to just rename this to pi. Um, this is essentially the meat of the whole whole project here. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, configure our invoke 0365 trace script. So this is essentially what you're gonna set up as a scheduled task in the background to constantly run and, uh, and evaluate message trace logs. So we're gonna go ahead and open this. There we go. Close out our commands window here. Now, the first thing you want to do is review these install instructions. Um, basically, what we want you to do is review these lines that are marked in here. Now, this may be different by the time you try this script, um, but at the time of making this video, this is uh, the current install process, um, but, we're, but it should be basically the same. Now, down here, we have these uh, user configurable parameters. Now, these are the areas that you're going to want to modify. Um, and the first thing you need to do is determine how you'd like to store credentials. Either way, it's not really that, that secure, so you want to make sure you have full monitoring on this host. Um, but encoded XML credentials is a way that at least uh, the attacker would have to see the credentials on this system in order to obtain the real, real value of those. So by default, we have that set to true. Now plain text under that, we have that set to false because that's very insecure. You're just going to have the credentials directly within this script uh, down at line 65 through uh, 68 here. Um, so we recommend using the uh, encoded XML credentials, although it may not be realistic in some scenarios. There's also an issue with this where upon reboot, these credentials will have to be reset. So if you're doing patching and stuff like that, make sure to go in and update uh, your XML file if you uh, choose to go with this option. So now, uh, since we're gonna choose to configure this with encoded XML credentials, we're going to take advantage of this first function here, or this first uh, if loop here, where basically we're going to prompt to obtain credentials, and then we're gonna export this to uh, uh, CLI XML. So basically just copy this line, go ahead and run it uh, down here in the window, and then name the uh, file where you'd like to store this. So first we're going to go ahead and plug in our credentials. There we go. Email and then all the password. Now we'll hit OK. So now uh, we're going to make sure that file saved. So we have svc.xml down here. And let's go ahead and type out the contents of this. So there you go. 
we have our uh, credentials set. So now if you wanted to do a uh, password, you could enter that here uh, in plain text. But the next thing we want to do is set our sock mailbox. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and plug this in just so our script knows where to paste this. Oh, I almost forgot, we need to set the proper name for our XML file uh, and location down here. So we're gonna go to E, set this to svc.xml. There we go. So we wanna make sure we're pointing to the right credential file so we can actually uh, log in here. Now we need to plug in uh, the host of our logarithm uh, web interface. So you wanna go grab your logarithm web UI IP address or domain name, plug that in there. Uh, we're also gonna show you how to generate a case API token and plug into the spammer list here. And we'll do those in a second. First, we're gonna make sure our credentials work and that uh, we have everything else configured um, properly uh, before we hop into the SIM and actually configure the, um, the integrations there. So the next thing we need to do is set our Pi folder. Now, so we're gonna set this to the location where we have uh, that, this uh, script stored. And uh, it's very important. Uh, you wanna you want make sure this is running from uh, this location that you specify there. So we can write data to that folder. Now this next part, we have our third party analytics section. This is where we configure our responses to phishing emails, the API tie-ins and other things that we wanna use. Now auto quarantine is uh, based off of this, thresh, this threat threshold. Uh, so basically what this is saying is if any of the detections that we define within our script are, are come back with a score higher than five, we're going to automatically quarantine that email. Um, now subject auto quarantine is something where we can do subject regex matching and auto quarantine based on that. Uh, we can also do auto banning based on that threat threshold. So right now we're just gonna leave auto quarantine set to true and the other two set to false. Um, that's kind of what I would recommend you do as well. Now this uh, next section is um, for basically open, uh, open analysis of, of the phishing emails that are coming in. This section you don't need API keys to actually tie into because um, we're doing just basic regex checks that are built into the script, short link analysis, uh, security and git link info, we're doing web scraping. So no uh, actual API key is required for those. Uh, these other uh, API integrations down below though, you'll actually need to uh, define an API key. So if you'd like to use say domain tools, you wanna set this flag to true and then plug in your username and uh, API key. Now you wanna do that uh, as you go down this list here. Basically making sure that um, you wanna take advantage of whatever API integrations you might already have licenses for, or uh, just what is, uh, is useful for your environment. Um, and so this is something where, just go ahead and set any of these to true, and then uh, go ahead and plug in the uh, associated API key, and then uh, you'll be good to go. These will automatically run uh, every time the script runs and detects a phishing email. So next, let's go back up here and actually take, uh, handle the logarithm integration. So what we need to do here is go out and uh, pull up our thick client uh, for the logarithm sim. We're gonna go ahead and log in here. Now we're gonna pull up the deployment manager. And the first thing we need to do is uh, generate our uh, case API token. So we're gonna go over to people and we're gonna go ahead and create a new account. So we're gonna do a search here for case. You can see we have a couple of them. We've been doing these for testing and stuff like that. So we'll hit new and we're gonna hit yes because this is for an individual. So we're gonna just call this one test API. Contact method, let's plug in an email. This is something, um, if you wanna have this tied to an email, you can. If not, doesn't matter. Now we'll hit okay. Uh, we have to make a new name. I guess this one's already taken. There we go. Okay. So there's our new uh, user that was just created. Now what we need to do is create a case API account for this user. 
So go ahead and hit generate. Uh, we're going to make a new token. And there we go. Now what we need to do is copy that out so we can paste that into our script. Let's go ahead and verify and make sure that this token is going to work when we plug it in. And now back to our script, let's go ahead and plug in that case API token. All right, next we need to plug in the uh, IP address or host name of our logarithm deployment along with the port this is running on. Uh, by default, this is probably 8443. Some environments, uh, you might have uh, moved this, so this could be 443. Now we're also going to plug in uh, the location of our EMDB. So this is going to be where uh, we're going to push updates to this list. So whenever we track a new spammer or start uh, updating this list, we're going to go ahead and append to uh, this text file. And that's something you'll want to configure within your sim to be ingested and tied to AIE rules, which uh, we'll go over later in this video. All right, so now that we have the, uh, the script all configured, we have our credentials tied in. Um, next thing we need to do is go over and modify uh, one file within our plugins directory. This is the uh, case API file. Uh, we just have to change one item in there to make sure that um, whenever we're updating cases or we're working with uh, the case API uh, that we're updating the proper location. So down here we need to modify line 30, uh, just define that case folder. So basically we're going to go and ahead and plug in where we have Pi installed and make sure that we leave uh, the plugins directory listed there. So there we go. Now we'll go ahead and save, and now all of the source code is good to go. So the next thing we need to do is just make sure that our credentials work, um, that these changes that we made to the script are writing these log files to the proper location. So you're going to want to open this logs directory. And um, as soon as we run the script, it's going to go ahead and write uh, to this logs directory here. Now, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and simulate some mail traffic just so we have something to look at. Um, since it's a, a demo 0365 instance, there's, there's not much going on in there. Um, you won't have to do this within a, a real environment because email is, is constantly flowing. So we'll go ahead and let this run in the background. You can see we have a few uh, fake emails being generated here. So these are actually being sent through Office 365. So now that we have that running, we're going to go ahead and run our script. Uh, just run invoke 0365 trace. Uh, no options are required. No additional command line parameters or anything. So go ahead and run that. Now we'll pull up a, our uh, logs folder here. There we go. Now these warnings and stuff that you're seeing in the background, completely fine. Uh, it's, it's completely expected. Now you can see uh, the script ran successfully. We have our ongoing trace log has been generated along with the ongoing fish log and a, a temp CSV file. Uh, the fish log is where phishing attacks will be stored. Temp is where a uh, working directory for some of the analytics that we do later on. And the file that you want to pull into the sim is that ongoing trace log. Now this is just going to be the message tracking logs as they're, they're generated. Uh, within uh, within your, your deployment here. So one of the main things we want to do, uh, well now that you've verified these files have been written, uh, let's go ahead and open this. Just make sure that we have actual log data uh, being written to here. So there we go. There's some of our totally legit mail that we were just sending. So there we go. Everything looks looks good there. So we'll show you how to collect this with your SIM uh, shortly. So now that we have these logs being collected, let's go ahead and uh, configure our system monitor agent. So we'll go ahead and bring up the installer here. And once we configure this, we'll be able to start collecting our new uh, Office 365 message tracking logs. Now once you have this uh, installed, let's go ahead and configure this. I'll plug in your data processor address, 
make sure the service is set to start up automatically. And then uh, we'll just verify the log files here, make sure we don't see any errors down here. Uh, warning's fine, we see an acceptance pending message here. That's something where um, to be expected. So we'll go ahead and hit apply. Now over in the, uh, the sim here, we'll go into deployment manager and let's go ahead and accept our new uh, system monitor agent. So actions accept. Now down here, we're just going to use a light agent. We don't have to do any endpoint monitoring or anything like that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and, and bare bones, kind of real lightweight agent for this one. So uh, we want to make sure we select the uh, right data processor, hit OK, and there you go. Now we see our, we have our new uh, Pi server set up as an accepted source. Now we don't have anything populated here yet because the agent hasn't synced and we haven't uh, configured anything directly. So first thing we need to do, let's go ahead and collect these new uh, system monitor uh, or Office 365 logs. So we'll go ahead and do a search here. O365 message tracking. Now this is uh, within the current knowledge base. Um, down here the MPE policy, we want to set beta logger than default. And then uh, date parsing is something you want to make sure we have this set properly so that we know uh, when these emails are coming in and the sim can make sense of it. And I'm going to do a search in here to see if we have this added yet. It looks like this isn't included uh, directly so what we're going to go ahead and do is go back out to our, uh, our readme and we're going to go ahead and pull up the instructions again for this and we're just going to take the regex for time parsing down here and plug this into the sim directly. There we go. So we'll copy this out. And down here in the instructions, you can see basically how we need to have this uh, configured within the logarithm sim under a flat file settings. So go ahead and name this however, however you'd like, preferably something so you can uh, find it later. Plug in the regex, hit OK, and then we're going to go ahead and select that. Now we just need to plug in the file path uh, pointing to our ongoing trace logs on the Pi server. Go ahead and plug that in. And I'm just going to double check here, make sure we got that right. Ongoing trace log. Folder structure looks right. All right. So we are good to go. Now we'll go back to basic configuration, hit apply. And there we go. So now you can see we have that in there. As soon as we refresh that, you can see the uh, system monitor agent has now synced with the host. So we have all these other options available. Um, but we're really gonna focus on this uh, flat file here, the, uh, the ongoing message tracking logs. So now that we have that in here, uh, we need to uh, next verify that logs are coming in. So what we're going to go ahead and do is pull this up under our log sources. There we go. And we're just going to go ahead and run a tail on this just to make sure that events are coming in um, whenever we actually are running that script. And we'll go ahead and simulate some email data again. So we have something to, to actually forward to the sim. Now let's go ahead and run our script one more time here. Change back to our directory, pi, run 0365 trace. Now we should see this updating. Um, usually in a production environment, you'll have a lot more data, so this will change uh, much more significantly than it does here. Um, but as soon as that script executes, we should have some fresh logs coming in. So in a moment here, we'll go back to the sim uh, once the script completes. Uh, there we go. And we'll go back and make sure um, that these logs were actually being pulled in. Give this a second, and there we go. We have all our new 
uh, email logs are coming into the sim. Now we can open these and make sure that all the metadata is being parsed out properly so that we can use this within our dashboards and, and make sense of this data going forward. So there we go. Everything is looking good. So now we have this data coming into the sim and we're officially parsing uh, what we need to begin uh, developing some AI rules and, and dashboards. So let's go ahead and do that next. Let's go ahead and start by, uh, we're gonna import the Pi dashboards, which are included within the uh, GitHub repository. And, um, and then we're gonna configure some alarms. So first let's go ahead and log into our web interface. Let's go ahead and enter credentials here. Now I need to add my uh, multi-factor code. Okay, go ahead and plug that in. And now we're presented with the, uh, the standard logarithm dashboard on um, kind of whatever you, you left it at last. Um, so pretty easy process to import these if it's not something you've done before. Um, all we have to do is open our dashboards view here and go ahead and hit the plus sign next to a new dashboard. So we'll do that now. Can go ahead and name this. Um, it doesn't matter if you name it now or, or later. Now, um, once you upload, it will actually overwrite this. So um, just something to keep in mind. Now we don't need any filters or anything like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and upload this directly. So go back into our, our folder that we pulled down. And now this is under SIM dashboards. And now there's three dashboards here. We're gonna start with this uh, Office 365 analytics dashboard. Go ahead and hit open. We'll give this a second to populate and load the uh, JSON here. There we go. Now you can see we have a few events coming in here. Just some of our uh, simulated data. Expand this out so you can see it a little better. Um, but this is the main dashboard that, that we use uh, within the logarithm sock. Um, kind of gives us a really good overview of what's going on in the environment. In terms of timing, uh, what, what I'd suggest is setting this to about an hour frame, uh, just so that, that you're constantly staying on top of what currently is coming into the environment. Um, now one of the other dashboards we have is an analyze dashboard. This allows you to really dig down into that email data. So let's go ahead and do that next. You can see I drilled down into just one of the items from our last dashboard, so you can get to that analyst view. And then we're gonna go ahead and upload our analyst dashboard. Now this parses out all of that email data, sender, recipient, subject, delivery status, all that kind of stuff in a very easy to, to manage view here. Uh, makes it very easy for us to go through and, and find emails of concern and, and things like that. All right, so we're gonna go back to the main home page, the main dashboard here. And we do have one more dashboard that you can choose to install if you'd like. Um, this one focuses on the threat map. So this is looking at where emails are originating from, where they're being sent to, makes it, uh, makes it easy for us to track some of this data. Now, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and make sure uh, that we're, we're pulling all of this data in as events to our uh, our sim. Now the main reason for doing this is just so that we can see all of the email traffic uh, that's coming into the company within a dashboard. Now this is kind of out of bounds of what you normally should do uh, within a deployment so we're going to bend the rules a little bit here uh, just because the data set uh, is so powerful once you have this all kind of presented to an easy to manage fashion. So we're going to go into log, log, the uh, log processing policies and go ahead and um, click the MPE policy editor for our message tracking logs. And now you, all you have to do is select all of these. And we're gonna go ahead and change our event management settings and set this to uh, forward all of these logs as events. Now you can modify risk ratings and things like that as well. Not something that you need to do. Um, but the main thing is make sure these logs are coming in uh, as an event. 
Now you can uh, override log source settings for forwarding the log mart and things like that, but that's not required uh, in order to get this data. So all set. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create some AI engine rules. Um, we're going to go ahead and make a few rules to uh, begin to alarm off of this activity. So first one uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, we're just going to trigger on any email that is forwarded to the security operations team. So we're going to select recipient. And then let's just add our phishing inbox here. Go ahead and plug this in. Uh, make sure you have an ignore case set. We'll add the item. Go ahead and hit OK. Simple as that. Now, log source, we do want to find the log source just so we don't uh, overutilize our, our AI engine. So we're going to go ahead and call out the log uh, that we want to pull in here. So we'll go ahead and search under Pi for our server. And now this one, you'll just have one. Uh, we have two here just because one of them was uh, one we we're testing with. So go ahead and plug that in. And then let's uh, group this by the uh, sender and recipient. You could also do subject and things like that if you want to get uh, more granular. Um, but these two are the only ones that are really uh, required for this. Now you can plug in description and stuff if you like in here. So we'll go over to settings and let's set the classification for this. Um, since this isn't really a high security event, it's just something that's more suspicious that we need to investigate. We'll set it as suspicious, set it as a uh, moderate event, medium high, and we want to make sure we alarm on this. Now for the suppression multiple, let's go ahead and set this to 300 seconds or five minutes. Uh, we're doing that because this is the polling interval that we're going to set for the, uh, the job that's going to constantly be running that API integration. Now in here under actions, we could uh, tie this to a smart response at this time, but that's something we'll get into uh, later on in this video. Now in here, we just need to name our rule. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. So just phishing email reported. And then down here, uh, let's select the rule group. So essentially how we want to associate this rule. So go ahead and click suspicious. And plug in a quick description so that other analysts know uh, what this rule means when it fires. So basically this rule will fire whenever a phishing email has been reported to the phishing box. So very, very quick and easy rule. I'll go ahead and save that. Now, in order for these changes to take effect, we do have to restart the AI engine, um, but we're gonna go ahead and create another rule first. Um, you can see we have our, our rule right there. Now this next one requires a list. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is import the list that we have saved from uh, our GitHub repository. This is a general value list. So we'll go ahead and name this. And this one we're gonna be looking for suspicious subjects. So this is using a regex list that we got from uh, Swift on Security's uh, GitHub page, which is, it's funny, it's a very short uh, threat list, but it's actually been very effective uh, in our testing. So we'll go ahead and allow anyone who's a global admin to modify this list. And we're gonna import from a text file. So let's go ahead and select our file here. Go back into our Pi server or Pi folder. And so now this is going to be under alarms and threat lists. So email subject regex. Now that link regex is actually already embedded in the script. Um, we supplied it there in case you want to pull this in as a separate list. Um, so these are all the items from that list. And now we need to make sure we set this on the proper value. Uh, so we're going to set this on the subject parameter here. So this is what we'll be able to associate this list with uh, when using it on AIE engine rules. 
All right, so our list is in. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now let's verify that our list has been updated here. And we'll go ahead and go back to our uh, AI engine, or AI engine, and we're going to create another rule here. Let's go ahead and hit New. Now let's scroll down a bit, and we're going to uh, go ahead and select Subject. There we go. And then Edit Values. Now what we need to do here is add a list. So we're going to add our new list here. So search for fishing. And then uh, down there you can see fishing suspicious subjects. We'll go ahead and select that. And there we go. Now we have our new list uh, imported here. There we go. And you want to make sure you have that selected as a regular expression. Um, just so, to, so that we're uh, parsing this properly. Now we're going to go ahead and define our log sources again. Uh, we're going to set the pi log source one more time. Again, you only have uh, one of these options to check here. There we go. Now the last thing we need to plug in is our group by parameters. So we're gonna go ahead and select uh, sender and subject. And now we can do recipient as well. However, this can uh, get very verbose and fire lots of alarms if you have, say, one email from one spammer that was sent to 100 different people. So just keep that in mind when configuring these rules. Now back here, we're gonna set alarm on this uh, event. We're gonna set the uh, suppression multiple to 300 uh, once more, so five minutes. And uh, now we need to define the uh, classification and risk rating. So we're gonna set this as a higher rule because this is something where the subject regex has actually been uh, pretty accurate um, from our testing, but you do want to have some manual intervention here if you choose to do any automation on top of it. Now let's go ahead and set the rule group. Let's scroll down here. And how about we set this as um, an external threat and account attack. Sounds, sounds fitting. Now we'll define the rule name. So suspicious subject detected. There we go, so we're all set. Now you could take this the uh, next step if you wanna do the same thing for uh, known spammers and things of that nature. Um, but just to keep this video short, we're gonna go ahead and hop into uh, the next section of configuring the Pi server at this time. Now, the next step what we need to do here uh, is go ahead and enable these. Actually, before we jump on to, to the next step, got to make sure these are enabled. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and restart AIE. And there we go. Now back over in the dashboard, uh, we just have one last change that we need to make uh, so that we can effectively utilize the data that we're pulling in. So over here we want to modify these widgets to go ahead and uh, exclude our company internal mail. So you can see I uh, plugged in not sender from our internal company. Now you're going to do this to these other variables here uh, just so that you're capturing the uh, every, everything that's coming in from outside of your company. Now back over to the GitHub project here, um, let's look at our logarithm smart responses. So this is gonna allow us to perform various automated actions from within the uh, sim directly. So if you scroll down here, you can see kind of an example of what uh, these scripts are doing and, and how they work with the sim. So let's go ahead and configure some of these. So we've already pulled down that source code. Uh, let's go ahead and import our smart responses. Let's go over to actions, import. Uh, let's go back to our uh, directory where we pull these down. 
and select 0365 Ninja. This is going to be the script that does quarantining and blocking and those types of things. So we have that uh, imported there. So we can go ahead and close this, close this out. And the next thing we we'll want to do is tie this smart response to an alarm. So let's go ahead and pick on this uh, suspicious subject detected rule that we just created. So all we have to do is go down uh, into the action section and then select which option we would like to, to use. So for this one, let's go ahead and quarantine mail from sender. So now down here, what we need to do is plug in our uh, variables. So username, password, all of the data that we essentially have plugged in uh, directly in that other script, we need to set here so that we uh, provide the script access to our Office 365 instance. So set the username and password. Uh, the sender is going to be in the alarm field. So this is something we're already pulling uh, from this specific alarm. Uh, plug in the sock mailbox. This is where we're going to pull that mail back to uh, for analysis and uh, those quarantine actions. Um, essentially that processing folder we talked about before. Uh, logarithm host, we're going to go ahead and plug in the, uh, the web interface for our logarithm deployment. And then we're going to insert our case API token here. So we'll go back and copy this out of our uh, script here. There we go. That's a very long uh, token. So make sure you get the whole thing when uh, selecting this. Let's do it from the end there. There we go. We'll plug that in. And then the nuke flag is going to be something we want to set to true. So dollar sign true essentially for that one. And that's going to tell us uh, the sim that whenever we execute the smart response, we do want to in fact quarantine this, this attack. Now, one of the key things here is choosing where this smart response executes from. Um, you wanna make sure this is running from a server that has PowerShell version three or later installed um, so that you can do the RESTful API and in, in, uh, interactions with the script. So we're gonna run that from our Pi server directly. Um, that's usually the best way to do it. So if you know your scripts run normally from that server, uh, configure your smart response to execute from there as well. Now we're all set. We have our uh, smart response configured. And now whenever this alarm fires, we should have automated actions perform. So back in the sim, you can see we have a, a lot of good data here. Um, our dashboards are populating nicely. Uh, so, so at this point, you're, you're pretty much good to go. Now the last piece I want to touch on, this is something we don't have released yet, uh, is our uh, Pi button. Essentially the easy way for our users to report phishing attacks to us. Um, so I'm going to go through the options here. So in Zach's email here, he's showing the various options available for the install. You can do silent install, um, so it allows you to do this through a, uh, a deployment system like SCCM or Landesk or something like that. Um, so basically, we already have this uh, file pulled down. I'm just going to do the uh, quick double-click install we talked about up here in the GUI uh, Explorer install, um, although you do have those command line options available. Now you'll see our uh, Outlook client currently does not have uh, any of that uh, populated, so we don't have a phishing inbox or a phishing button within our, our inbox. So we're gonna go ahead and close our Outlook client so that we can refresh this. And we'll actually have the uh, new button appear uh, once, we, once we open this again. So go ahead and open our Outlook client. And this is something you can do silently via GPO or, or various other ways to push this out uh, enterprise-wide. So now we'll have our uh, inbox come back up here and I'm just going to go into my junk folder and select a, a very obvious phishing email. It's the one I just sent out here from uh, this uh, spe uh, spear phisher. 
just to uh, use for the demonstration in this video to show you kind of how the whole system works together. So here's our new email, just our little obvious uh, fake phishing attack here. Now the way users will see this is they're going to get this new phishing report uh, tab available here. Let's go ahead and click on that. And this brings down our new uh, phishing button here. So as soon as we click that, we get a response. So here's the uh, response that we receive, basically saying, hey, you know, thank you to the user for reporting this email to us. Um, just something where you want to keep this kind of high level, essentially. Um, let's go ahead and close that. Close our email here as well. Minimize this. And we'll show kind of what this workflow looks like uh, once that has been initiated. So down here in this uh, circle here, whenever a new phishing email has been reported, uh, this circle is going to light up. There we go. Essentially just like that. Um, and so now this will give you some high level information that this email has been uh, reported as a phishing attack. This also will file or fire that alarm that we configured earlier. Now we're going to go ahead and jump right into case management so we can see the automated workflow that's been kicked off in the background uh, once we submitted this email. So down here you can see our cases. Um, this is that email we just reported. Now this case was automatically generated as soon as that uh, phishing email was received by our phishing inbox. So down here we have case details, we have the threat score being tracked. Um, this email is not quarantined um, due to it not passing our threat score, our threat threshold that uh, we defined earlier. Um, URL void, malware did detect uh, some malware in this, in this link here. Uh, so to get link info. Um, and then down below you can see uh, we've captured all of the recipients. So everyone who has received this mail at the company, uh, we know within, within seconds who all has received this and how uh, wide reaching this campaign is. So what we're going to do this time is tag this as a phishing attack. And then uh, I'm going to dive into uh, the O365 Ninja smart response directly to kind of show you how that works um, outside of, of this attack here. So the first thing that we're going to do is pull up our PowerShell window here. And now to go ahead and install the uh, O365 Ninja PowerShell, you can use import module and then just point to the location of wherever you have the O365 Ninja PS1 file located. Um, now that's something where you can plug in your uh, information such as like the logarithm case API, web UI location, stuff like that. Uh, so you don't have to plug this in every time going forward. Um, that's something we've done for this demo uh, just for kind of ease of use purposes here. Um, but there are various options available within this script so highly recommend you comb through this and uh, use what makes the most sense for you within your environment. Um, but for this demo, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, quarantine and block the email uh, that we just investigated. So we're going to use the scrape mail and block sender tags to define those actions. And then we're going to plug in the actual sender, pass the nuke flag, and then define the case number. So that case number correlates to that current case that we have uh, back there. Now you can see as soon as we run this, we're connecting out to O365 gathering information on who all has received this email and um, essentially quarantining from all of those recipients. So right down here we can see seven total people have received this and now we're working on that blocking action uh, for those seven recipients just essentially adding a, a rule to each of their junk mail filters so so most likely they won't see these messages in the future. And then uh, once all of these actions have been completed, down below we can see the logarithm case management integration has completed. And now this will go ahead and update that case. Oh, there we go. You can see the uh, case behind us went ahead and updated. So we have that ongoing tracking and accountability for when analysts perform these actions either within the sim or outside of it. So various options available for running that. Um, 
You can see down here we're tracking all each of those actions we just performed. So it makes it really easy to uh, detect and respond to these types of phishing attacks within your environment. So last thing we need to do is just go ahead and close this case out and uh, then we are good to go. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope this has uh, been beneficial and uh, best of luck. Thank you.